Ahoy, 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 everyone. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Hope you are having a good day today. It is Friday. We're super excited to be here. We've got so much, um, so much news things happening crazy stuff would, happening everybody would you do me a favor flynn what's that it, it looks like the sun is setting on my shiny head yeah here. unfortunately <laughs> uh if i lower it too much then our background starts getting funky so there's a there's a balance um, there we don't want to scare people so i just wanted to mention actually about our about our backdrop is mm -hmm. that it is by brickanista the fabulous year of the ox backdrop i love this yeah, I've been, check check out that owl a bit. That's not an owl. Wait, it's no, who is it? An ox, excuse me. And I, I, okay, I'm about 20 seconds into this, but I was just looking where it says you're of the ox up there. The ox is so cute going in. I'm sorry, it was <laughs> small in my view. Anyway, thank, thank um, you, Brickanista. Thank you, Brickanista. And peace. <laughs> It's not the year of the owl, Flynn. It's not. Um, and anyway, um, I wanted. To... God. An auspicious beginning. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, be sure and uh, check out. brickanisa has got her own mm -hmm. her channel going now. She just got some awesome stickers, and her and Debo Bricks have been doing some uh, really great uh, rebrick challenges. We are unfortunately so overburdened with challenges that we haven't gotten a chance to participate yet, but it's a fun uh, uh, more challenges and stuff that are going on. So make sure that you are checking them out. It's fun over there. So, well, let's see. Uh, so, oh, we've got oh, pins. Oh, look, you've got an owl pin. I... Okay, Guys. I was a okay. little kid in the 70s when owls were huge. We had an owl macrame plant hanger. I had a collection of owls. So when I see big eyes, it's the first place I go. Give a hoot. Oh, don't, don't pollute. pollute. That don't was pollute. an owl, too. Uh, anywho, everyone. So, um, let's see. Friday, things are happening. We've got pins. Let's do pins. Okay. All right. You want to go first? I'm going to attempt to, um, you know, uh, I'm going to attempt to go clicky on this and make this happen. So, okay. Good I've luck. Got... There, there they are. Uh, right there. Clicky. Yay! Magic. I've got my figment pin on today, so I'm very, very excited. Well, about I didn't I love this pin. I didn't know what our focus was going to be like because I know Clicky is a big star right now and is making like national appearances. So oh, we'll goodness. see if they have All right. you know time to focus our pins. Speaking of which, I've got an old school Mickey pin here. Oh, a gift Pirates from of the Caribbean! Mini very Fig cool. Trick and paint pusher, Pirates of the Caribbean Mickey. Our folks. Very cool. All right. It wouldn't Let's be a very a scary pirate. It would not be a very scary pirate. No, his, I think, <laughs> what What would Mickey the pirate ship be? Uh, a steamboat, steam Willie. Really? Yes, yes, of course. Um, okay, so we've got oh, um, the... This pin is it, the eyes of the Pink Panther. <laughs> no, <laughs> it is figment. I wish it was the eyes of the Pink Panther. It kind of looks like that. Um, so, I'm gonna have a sip of coffee here. All right. <laughs> We've been busy this morning. We have been busy this We've morning. We've got a... Conspiring on new projects. Conspiring on new projects, talking... We had, we may or may not have had a meeting with Lego about something that I'm not gonna talk about right now. Mm -mm. Um, and... No, you're just gonna tease. I'm just gonna tease, because that's what I like to do here. Um, so, let's see. What have we got going on? We have got... News. Well, it's a Friday, and there's big, big, big news. There's big, big, big news, you guys. Big, Just big, the big facts, news. man. Um, but first of all, uh, let's go and see what we got here. Uh, Whoa. Oh, it's not the minifigure scene challenge, actually. That shouldn't be there. These so are actually, gonna... you know, these two are not minifigures. Mm -hmm. Oops. They are not minifigures. They but they play them on TV. They do play them on TV. Um, okay. So this is the big news. This is the big news for today, everybody. We the season two of Lego Masters cast has finally been announced so that we can finally talk about Clicky without fear of retribution from I know, Fox. Clicky was a big secret. 
<laughs> so, um, oh, check that I out. I wanted to. You know what, Flynn? What's that? The set has been redesigned. Well, it's in a whole different state. So, oh, yeah. Oh, that would I make see sense. what. There's the minifigure wall. Yeah, there's the minifigure okay. wall. It looks mostly the same, but it does look like there are some. Um, there are, it does look like there are some, there's some those, changes. There's those steps I would bash my head on when I was yes. feverishly looking for parts. The steps where I awkwardly, like, almost handshake and then hugged my embiolic. That's, yes. like, where that that momentous moment Ooh, happened. You're the only person I know who's had that experience. <laughs> that was so weird. That was such a weird... Um, I actually talked about it on, uh, I think, Cy O'Connor's show. Actually, mm -hmm. by the way... I will be on London Bridge Bricks this afternoon after our show. So make sure you head on mm -hmm. over there to Greg's channel afterwards. Boone's going to be there, too. We're going to be talking about some Lego Masters stuff. And as you know, Lego Masters is just... You know what? I'm going to do this because... I was, I was um, going to say, it's like... We were there for it, a long time. They're, um, they're on screen. They're like, when's it our turn They're wonderful. Talk? They're wonderful. But we're going to go back to this for a second. So there is, um, there is a lot of... Uh, to chat going on about Lego Masters, and you know Lego Masters is showing, uh, our version is showing in the UK right now, mm -hmm. and they just got episode three, which is the that episode... That was a good one. It was a good one. It was the one where we won for our clock man, so that was excellent and very fun. Um, and let's see. Oh, Panfred Nudo is here. How's it going? Hype Train is here. Hype, hype, hype. Just to bring a little bit of... of uh, Twitch over here to the of, matronly YouTube stream. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this yeah. one. Oh yeah, my so goodness. So much trouble. Okay, you guys. Um, uh, let's actually, while... I think we should say hi let's, to everyone. I was say, let's, why don't we say hi to everybody who's here. This has been like, I was so excited about the news that we just ran headlong into the news. I know, because I don't, I don't know. I know a little bit about who's on the I've got it all written show, down. Barely anything. I've got it all written down on the back of this envelope. All right. So, um, let's see. Anna G is here. Brickanista, how's it going? Uh, Chris Ulysses Space Pro Built Chalice. Very good. <laughs> Debo Bricks. Delicious. Delicious Foods is here. Demure7242. Uh, Gary Mullane is here. Uh, Heather Brownlee. How's it going? Jake, Jake Sadovich. Is Joel. Here. He of many names. Marbella. Christopher Coster is here. Christopher Coster is here. Hey, Christopher. Uh, awesome. Uh, he's actually building his giant horse build in real bricks right now, and it's amazing, Ooh. I'm just going to say. Uh, Mini Fig Nick. Monica Berry. Moto. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Oh, Matthew Builds Bricks is here. Hi, Matthew. Oh, Mr. Saurus is here. Emma Saurus is Mr. Hi, welcome. So glad to see you. Um, let's Ms. see. Slow Brickta is Ms. here. Ms. Slow Brickta. I'm not quite sure who that is, but I think we'll find out in a little bit. We might know more. Um, uh, yeah. Panfred Nudo is here. Uh, Pete W., Remy Baker, Rob Ketcherside, Rob Zaccardi and the Zaccardis, Lon, Elaine, and Vanessa. Hello. Uh, we've got uh, Robin Eklund. Sarah Silverman is here. Hi, Sarah. Always glad when you can stop by. Shane Levan, Shane is, Levan here. is here. Shane, the Hornburgers. Ahoy, hoy, Hornburgers. Uh, WGJL Builds. Wilfred is here. Bonsoir. Will, Will Letchworth is here. Got your email. Uh, there's a special guest at the Lego store tomorrow, and I may need to convince this one that we need to go over there in the morning. Oh, we have an adventure in the offing. Well, I'm just going to say it's... So anyway, so it'll be um, a family affair. Wire, pu wire, <laughs> well, wire puppy is here. Hi, wire puppy. That's a new name. I haven't seen you before. Welcome to the stream. Please, everybody give a big tricky lug. Welcome to all of our new viewers. We've got Zach Martinez and of course, Zara Kino. Kim. Kim. Ah, I can breathe easy now. Uh, so uh, I think Albert Lee and Aubrey Kobach and your dad just popped in. Hi, dad. Hi, dad. How's it going? Good to see you. All right. Now, how about we go back See, to that it news? Is, it is a family affair. It is a family affair. <laughs> you, you mentioned Darth Vader. And well, then I, your dad I was, shows I was, up. Not that your dad is no, that he's, guy. No, he's but not. Saying, but, you know, it was he, coincidental. He walked up to me once when we were on a high bridge over a chasm, and he said, Richard, I am your father. <laughs> if you haven't figured out who we're talking about by now. Anyway. But, you know, my dad actually <laughs> doesn't go around wearing, you know, like a... Like a 
costume. Not recently. No, he that's does. True. Some, that's, not the same. that's not true. He's, he's actually telling tales about my dad. He's actually an amazing costume maker. And over the years has, has come up with some pretty crazy costumes. The cork thing was one of my favorites. Yep. Okay. So, um, oh, Spud Hill Farm. We have another new viewer. Hi, welcome. welcome. So glad to have you here. Um, and, oh, yes, that's right. Um... Shane LeVan is actually doing some streaming now, too. And I'm sorry we couldn't watch your test stream, but he is going to be doing a stream tomorrow. And also, tomorrow is our Tricky Lug meeting. So if you are wanting to go to the Tricky Lug meeting, you can reach out to Minifig Fig Chick, and she can tell you how to uh, how to show up. You well, can good also... thing we don't have dance cards, because they'd be full. Oh, no, we have a full. We have a full card, y'all. Um, and also, um, maybe if our Queen of Links is able to... Um, if you can go ahead and uh, put the link mm -hmm. for our link tree in there, there's a link for our Discord server, which you can join, and mm -hmm. you'll be getting all kinds of... There's some information that ends up on Discord before it makes it to the show. So, um, including tomorrow, I'm going to be talking a little bit about an upcoming challenge that's going to happen. So you, know, you may want to tune in for that. Discord is like your, your little ticker tape readout, right? That's like, right. Why do I always talk about ancient technology? It's, <laughs> it's like Discord is like our crystal ball. Yeah, it Im is. Images it is. up here. So, okay. Now, yes, there is a Discord server, Shane. I'm sure you didn't know anything about it. All right, we're going to head back over to that uh, to that news here. So, Lego Masters 2 has been announced with our cast, and we're going to go through everyone's and judge their outfits. No, no, we're not no, really going to do that. This is, this is Ron and Cindy. It is not. Just don't... I, you know what? I actually, I actually just, have no idea. You just nod, but I can't and wait. I'll read. You know what that means is, so last season, we watched Lego Masters, and we knew everything that was going to happen. We, you know, the highs, the lows, all the adventures, and I know nothing about this season, so I'm so excited. Okay, so, now, okay, I'll tell you, first of all, before we go down this list, there are 12 teams this year. Where there was only uh -oh. there was only ten in our version. Uh oh, that means and some, some people are going to go home. Almost half of them are siblings, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Family feud. R yes, and family picnic. We still. I'm I'm thrilled to say that we still retain our crown as the gay married couple of Lego Masters US. Yay! There is no gay married couple this season, so they didn't recast us. So that's good. You may not <laughs> you may not know that, but but we're married. Um, all right. So um, this news, is news Brian and Lauren. Brian and Lauren are brother and sister, so they are one of the teams. Looking good. I can see it. They have they have. I can see a resemblance between the two of them. Indeed. Um, and can you see a resemblance between these two? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. This is Caleb and Jacob, and they are, no big surprise, probably, they are twins. And they're, and they're, um, uh, they look to be young builders. They do. They, they look, to, well, everyone looks like a young builder to us, to be fair. <laughs> So. <laughs> I don't these kids on the new Lego Masters. <laughs> um, okay, so next up, this is Dave and Richard. Now, Dave Coletta, the guy on the left. I don't, I don't know Richard, but Dave, I actually um, uh, did an appearance at his uh, kindergarten class earlier in the pandemic and talked with his students. He's a wonderful builder. Oh, how um, fun! A really, really, really great, really, really great guy. So, all right, uh, and they are friends. They are not brothers. Um, and they'll be nice and warm on that air-conditioned set. Now, so I know this guy, Jack, who's on the left. We're Jack. really close. I'm kidding. I don't know Jack at all. But we all know who that person on the right is, everybody. It's our very own Ms. Slow Brickta. And I even got this for this occasion. Let me make sure it's already Ms. Slow Brickta, everybody. Yay. There you go, Holly. I don't know if you uh, are in the crowd, but there's your applause uh, that you uh, the, your applause sound that you asked for. And I'm so I'm not sure, but I think if you have an eagle eye and you look really close, you might see another Tricky Lug member in this shot. There is there is a clicky in Dawn's pocket, which I am. You know, we spotted that in the uh, in the preview when we saw it. Yep. Um, so. Uh, congratulations, Don, and to your brother, too. And I can't tell you how 
proud and honored we are that you showed your first mocks here on our show. And it's just it's just been um, it's just so thrilling to see you on the show now um, after all your hard work. And you've had a meteoric rise. I know. Um, just <laughs> um, so fantastic. Yay, Tricky Lug. All right. Yay, Mr. Um, Brick and they are brother and sister. There you go. All right. I'm going to head back over to my uh, slides now. All right. We've got, this is Maria and Philip, and they are the only married couple I on the show. I was going to say, I, I, um, I bet this is the married couple. Yes, you're right. Yes. Um, this would be an, a strange pose for a brother and sister. So, yes, um, they are a married couple. They are known as Midwest Builders. Now, if you mm -hmm. want to uh, connect with any of these people, if you go to our Instagram account, mm -hmm. um, I have tagged everybody. Now, here's the tragedy. Instagram will only allow you to tag 20 people in a photo, as I discovered this oh, morning. I was no. adding people on, and yes, yeah, so they are Midwest builders on Instagram, but you can go and check them out. So what a bummer about the tags, though. So thanks, Instagram. Um, but you know, I'll tell you what I am thanking Instagram about. What's that? We are about 100 followers away from 10k followers on instagram do you know how many people that would be if we were all in a room together that's that's so a lot so exciting that's so exciting um i i am i can't even believe it so if you're not on instagram if you're not following us on, Inst on instagram please do we are tricky bricks up there and we would so appreciate the follow to get us to that 10k and and flynn i i gotta say flynn manages most of our social media and um, you put lots of fun stuff up there. It's like we have a colorful Instagram account. I try to. <laughs> um, okay, so this is um, these are brothers. More uh, some more bros. Uh, this is Mark and Stephen. Okay, and they look very casual. I was going to say, they look like they're going to be comfortable building. This is Natalie and Michelle, and they are friends. And oh my god, I love that hair. Her oh, hair yeah. is. Fabulous. I want that color. I've actually been considering coloring my hair again to some crazy color. I don't know. I can do it now with the job I'm at. But See, I've been thinking of starting to use curlers as well to get that kind of lively wave. <laughs> to get and that sort of... A little more body. A little zhuzhing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whoa. I don't know. I don't know who the guy on the right is, but the guy on the left is named, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, um, Paras or Paris, I'm not sure. I apologize. Correct us. Let us know. Um, but yes, it's actually true. I was kidding. On the right is our very own Moto. So, so exciting. So exciting. Check that out. It looks like they're, looks like they're, thank you. Thanks, Lee. Lee. We love you and miss you so much. Hi. It um, looks like these two are ready to make a Frankenstein creation out of Lego. I know. Right? They are mad scientists, clearly. And do you see who is hiding in Moto's pocket? Who is that? Another Teal Clicky! Another... Another Team Clicky. Yay! So, you know, I, of course we're going to be rooting for everyone. Of, of course, course. Um, but of course, but like how to decide between, you know, like Team Moto and Team Slow Brickta, like I just like I can't like that's not a decision I can make. So on Discord, I think I coined um, uh, uh, Team Slow Mo. So that's <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's my way of encompassing both of our tricky teams. Well, we wish them both great success. <laughs> I can't too. wait to see what they do. <laughs> I am totally into Team Slow Mo. Okay. Oh, and Team Mo Bricta. Mo, Mo that's Bricta. another one. Good. Like that's that. another good one too. Um, okay. So let's see. We've got. Um, and you know what's awesome? We have Moto here every Sunday hanging out with us. Yeah. Which I'm which is just just beyond thrilling. And you can tell Moto's serious about building because he's wearing a ponytail. It's true. He's got it all like he ready is for building. Serious. He, he is he's not serious. catching that hair between the bricks. He is seriously manister. All right. <laughs> 
no one else got Sorry. that, but it's okay. We, you if know, Lee was watching, she knows. You know, we do this when the camera's not on, too. Um, so this <laughs> this is Susan and Jen, and um, I actually have met both of them, and mm -hmm. Jen, especially, we met at um, at Bricks Cascade when we went. They're um, so She's a nice. lovely person. They're delightful. So i um, super, super excited um, to uh, to have them on the show as well. Okay, this is, and I, again, I'm gonna, I hope I pronounce this right. This is, um, Sarita and Randall. And I love, cool. I gotta say, I'm digging the fashion. Yeah, and, really. and Randall's wearing a, you know, like a cool pin. Yeah, it looks like he's got, he's got a pin on as well. Really, uh, really, really great. Great to see them on here. And they are friends. They are not a couple or siblings. They are friends. Um, and as Susan and Jen, we're also friends. Uh, and then we've got... Zach and Tim, who are brothers. No, I'm kidding. They are father and son. Um, the one on the left is the father. Um, and so they, I'm, I'm sorry. I just keep throwing them at the, you know, the one on the left is the father. <laughs> yeah, well, sorry, that one didn't fly. You, he's All right. got a million of them. I got a million of them. I got a million of them. Um, well, how so... exciting. Dad, imagine if we were on TV together building something. Mm -hmm. Just that would be crazy. Oh, Susan's here. Hi, Susan. How's it going? Very cool. Um, all right. And I will see myself out after that last one. Um, <laughs> and then last but certainly not least, we have brothers Zach and Wayne, who I understand are like don't live to like they're from California. Um, All right, I didn't go through where everyone was from because that would take too long. But um, this is great. Oh, look, and Lauren is here, too. Wow, we've got like a, we have like a quorum of Lego Masters season two people in the chat today. How this is so exciting. exciting. And Randall is here, too. Wow. This is crazy, what everybody. Fun. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all of the the Lego Masters season two people who are here visiting with us today. Um, we are just we're so thrilled to have you here and we are so thrilled to have you as part of the Lego Masters U.S. family and the, the greater worldwide Lego Masters family. It's true. Um, this is just um, I know if you think about wow. it between all of the seasons of Lego Masters across the globe, that is a pretty big group of people. It is. It is. So. So like, yes, shout out to everybody from season two. Congratulations. We Yay. are so proud of you all. We can't wait to see what you do, what the challenge... We've seen a little bit of previews of the challenges, and I gotta say, from the preview, I would have been terrified for the earthquake challenge. Well, yeah, that, right. That shaking one seems really hard on Mox. Well, being from well, being from California, we have a thing about earthquakes here. That's true. But um, I will say, what I did spy is I spied... A the earthquake challenge. I spied a wearable challenge. I know there were like there was big like head hats. head hats things, right? And um, let's say, hey, Philip is here. Wow, everyone is here. Gosh, welcome, welcome, That's welcome. So cool. This is thrilling. Wow, I don't think fun we, clubhouse today. And look at this, seventy-two people. We never have seventy-two people in here. This is awesome. And I'll take this moment to be like uh, one of those like youtube guys and just say if you're new here please cons consider subscribing you can subscribe it's, it's down there right down there it's free and um and it helps us out and you can also give a thumbs up to the stream we would super appreciate that too yeah so. and you know what i gotta say uh, well, I mean, part of us being recognized Lego fan media, Lego has noticed, you know, us, all of us, and what we do together, um, you know, as parts of Tricky Lug and on the um, Tricky Bricks build and chat. So it's cool. Yes, that's it's just very, very exciting. How great to have you have you all here and part of the family and and now officially announced. Yeah, because can I just tell you that like awkward time between when the commercial came out and today when we were like, hey, look, Clicky's on Lego Masters, too. Like no one knew that it was Moto <laughs> or Dawn. Like it was like the worst kept secret know, in and, like and the Moto, world. Who is everywhere on the web was like. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's someone. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, also, I just saw um, uh, Bricks O'Brien just slid into the chat. Hi, Brian. How's it going? Thanks for joining us today. Phew. Wow. 
wow, what it's already been an exciting show, and, it has, and, and it's we're not 10:30. even. Yeah, we haven't even been to Lego uh, Lego Logan Cookie Time yet. Oh yeah, we still gotta we still gotta wait to go. So uh, and golly, so and if I missed shouting out by name anybody in the um, in from the cast who's watching right now, uh, I apologize. Pop your name up in the chat. Say hey, I'm here. Oh, Michelle is here too. This is great. That's we just got like exciting. everybody is here. Wow, this is. Mm, so much fun awesome all right so i mm -hmm. am um what are we just uh, well blah, we have blah, a blah, we blah, have blah. a big oh. feature today a first a first time feature we do have that first time feature but we also have another one of our regular features oh yeah okay oh i think seven people from the cast are here right now this is crazy we have our cast of i love it for this well we do we're good I think we're good. Okay, I'll come back. All right, everybody. So now we're gonna like just step away from um, from Lego. Uh, we're gonna step away from Lego for just a minute for our Friday feature. That's right, everybody. It's that's right. Thing from the crypt, everyone. With all right, with your spooky friend and ours, Angela. Hey, Wayne. How's it going? Well, we got eight people here now. This is terrific. All right. So what, today's... What came out of the crypt today, Flynn? Today's tale, uh, Tales from the Crypt. Today's thing from the crypt <laughs> are records. You know how much we love records. And we're going to go to the top cam. All right. So back oh, when we that. were... We can show green. Yeah. So back when we were kids, this company called k -Tel was really, really popular. And they made really cheap, crappy records with hit songs on them. It was basically mm -hmm. like buying the equivalent of a mixtape. <laughs> yeah, right? it's basically a record on the equivalent of cardboard. <laughs> but they had all the all the top hits. I had a disco hits album that was by K-Tel. Um, so I have three different... Look at that one. Whoa, trip out, man. I've got three. Um... The uh, K-Tel's Mind Bender. Well, oh, and I just want to point out here that LaBelle is part of the mind bending music along with Neil Sadaka. With Neil Sadaka. <laughs> it's a wide range. And then we have Power Play, which was like the rock version. And they they did this for years and you could order them. And I got to show you, they're, they're absolutely terrible. Like they're super cheap, like crappy vinyl. Um, and they like bend really easily. And what I find is really funny is they're like, oh, it's Music Express. These are the, these are the most amazing and music Music Express is like the Captain and Tennille. <laughs> what I love, who had who had better Christy McNichol hair than, than Christy Tenille, McNichol? Than Tennille. Yeah, so there's lots of, you know, um, is it Love Will Keep Us Together is on here. Get Down Tonight by Casey and the Sunshine Band. Uh oh, Mandy by Barry Manilow. And Cats in the Cradle. Yeah, I don't. That's that's kind of a sad one. But anyway, uh, Mindbender also gives us some some fabulous hits. And I think, oh, you know what? Look, one of our favorites is here. Convoy. C.W. McCall's Convoy. One of our very favorites. Oh, the theme from SWAT. That's the theme from good. SWAT. Oh, and we're looking at it. That's 1975. Indeed. And Rocket Man is on here. We've got a great big convoy rocking through the night. We got a great big convoy. Ain't she a beautiful sight? Come on and join our convoy. Ain't nothing gonna get in our way. We're gonna roll this truckin' convoy across the USA. Convoy. There, sorry. Every time we talk about convoy, I have to sing it. And I, sorry. Every time we talk about convoy, I have to remind you that my dad, who's in the chat right now, published a CB radio newspaper in the 70s because CBs were so huge. So, um, so Power Play has Call Me by Blondie on it. This was obviously like a That's later 70s good. one. Yeah. Heartbreaker by Pat Benatar, one of your favorites. Any Way You Want It by Journey. So okay. this was definitely like the rock version. Here's right. from 1979, we've got My Sharona by which, the Knack. Which, you know, everybody considers a lot of these, like, Call Me by Blondie and My Sharona, and there are some Devo songs and some B-52 songs that people consider to be um, 80s songs, but are actually late 70s songs. Yeah. So there you go. That was today's Thing from the Crypt, everybody. Mwah, uh, uh, Hope uh. you enjoyed that. All right. <coughs> Let's see. 
That was that one, that one, and that one, and then what? What else have we got here? A I'm little, gonna, I well, gotta have a sip take of a coffee pause. after that. We'll add. Moto, remember in the early months of the building chat, we talked about casual. We're just gonna get back to casual. <laughs> came, uh, Phillips says, came here for the Lego, stayed for the singing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, so let's see, we've got um, a couple of other. So I saw today on Brickset that some new friends sets have been announced. We don't have official pictures of them yet, so we're not going to show them. But I did want to put in a plug for this Sunday's show. So this Sunday, we're going to have our regular panel, Moto, Kara, Holly, and Blair, plus two special guests. We've got Jake Studs coming on, who is a delightful fellow who I do the Twitch raid stream with on Tuesdays. And our very own Yano River Blue is going to be here, and we're going to be talking all about Lego video. So um, video, 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 video. We're going to have an in-depth um, uh, we're going to have an in-depth uh, chat about video with those people. Can I get let's scooch, yeah, let's scooch you over a little bit. Very good. There we go. Good. You know, I would say that video is the sleeper superstar, but it's like three weeks old or something. Right. So it no, is actually, it's uh, oh, you mean the line in general is it, a couple months old? OK, a, co a couple months old. But this notion of like it was a sleeper, it's starting to come. It's like two months. Well, everybody, so was, I think they're rocketing. To success with video. everybody was very down on video at the beginning, what and now it's, it's kind of like whoosh, it's yeah. kind of switching around. So yeah, it's like this is different. I don't know. What do I do? I have to use a computer to use this? Oh, mini figs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was my trajectory. Um, yeah, uh, uh, the Rock Thirteen says I'm still waiting to catch on to video. Yeah, you know it's a, it is an a, it's an acquired taste, but I really do feel like this new wave that's coming out is going to bring a lot of people who are maybe um, a little bit hesitant about it. Yeah. Um. In and if you like minifigures, I mean it's a no brainer. They've got amazing minifigs. That's what changed it for me as I started thinking about it like CMFs because I think you know. It, I'm not the target audience for video, but I love minifigs. Yeah, we are. We are definitely not the target audience for video, but that's okay. Um, I think the the um, the uh, I think the figs are amazing. The detail and the costumes are amazing, and we'll be talking about that um, uh, more on on uh, Sunday. And what I what I like too is that Jake, who's going to be joining us, actually has mm -hmm. a background with music. And um, I'm hoping that he can speak a little mm -hmm. bit to the to the music's uh, the music portion of it sure um um It'll be a lively conversation spud hill farm says the price is the big hurdle with video i i um, i can see that for I, the bigger sets especially yeah right? well i know that the bigger sets seem like they're really pricey but golly like they come with so much cool stuff and our buddy uh west talbot who's been on the show before mm. you know him uh from us as the one of the main designers of, of the elves line he also designed the um the lego ideas uh blacksmith shop he's been very um, instrumental in adding like high fantasy to the to newer lego sets right so what i discovered on instagram you guys is that it is Wes that is responsible for the dragon minifigs, surprise, and the design of the new fairy wings were his which idea. Which are awesome. Which are amazing. I mean, not, don't get me wrong. I love the little butterfly ones, but these are like legit fairy wings with like pointy bits and like the, yeah. There's even, there's a translucent one, right? Um, Isn't there like a There's clear? two gummy bear ones. There's a pink uh, clear one and a blue clear one. So I gotta say. Um, now... I hope so. Delicious food says I hope uh, that uh, that bandmates are in a feel bag, but I don't think they are going to. Oh, that reminds me. What's that? So there's a, been a lot of talk lately uh, online about you know there always is about when is Lego going to get rid of the plastic bags, and they are eventually going to be moving to a paper bags inside of like recyclable paper bags inside all of the sets. Oh yeah, so you open your box and you know what that means too is for the build and chat and for all of us streamers, it means we won't be making like a thunderstorm when we open our bags to start building the set. Right. Um, so I wanted to I wanted to point out that there has been a Oh, and I, let me just say, sorry. 
yay sustainable. I feel yeah, like Lego, who makes plastic toys, is really, really trying very hard, and you know, building blocks, trying very hard to be sustainable, and hooray right. for that. Um, so I, um, uh, so I wanted to address a, a rumor that's been going around. So there's been a big, there's been this rumor going around that Lego is getting rid of base plates. Everybody's freaking out. Oh, they're going to get rid of original base plates. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, they don't connect to anything on the bottom. So I get it. I'm in, I'm in that. Um, and everybody's been really afraid that they're going to like do away. Well, the word has come down from Lego. I saw this on the land yesterday is that they are, there are no current plans to get rid of traditional base plates, especially because Yay. things like modular buildings are still going to be built on the base plates um and that and stuff like that you so, know what i want to see i'd that? have to save my pennies for this because i know it would come at a cost but mm -hmm. what i would like to see is a 32 by 32 actual plate that can you would imagine be great. in like all different colors and translucent that, that would, would be, be cool. great what a sturdy way to start your model <laughs> right oh si o'connor is here hey si good to see you looking forward to hanging out with you hey, a little si. bit later um so I, uh, oh, so I had one more bit of news about Wes. Talbot. Wes Talbot, you guys. I'm super excited. So, you know, Wes came and did an interview with us over the pandemic, and then we were told by Lego that we could no longer do designer interviews because we weren't um, RLFM. And now we are RLFM, so we can start doing them again. I reached out to Wes the other day. Get, get this, you all. I'm so excited about this. So, you know, we've been doing our uh, history of shows, right? Like our yeah. history of different Legos. And it's been kind of like my dream to be able to do one of those history shows with one with a designer of that particular line. Flynn, what is one of our favorite themes in all of Lego? Um, elves. And we are going to be doing a history of elves with West Talbot on the show. Can you imagine? So, he'll he'll say all the little things that he included in there and what he was inspired <laughs> by. I can't wait to hear what he has to say. I am so, so excited about this. You know, this has been, I've mentioned it many times that this was something I really wanted to do. And we're actually going to get to do it. So really really excited about that um we Probably also a wednesday show right yeah but wednesday if i'm not sure we'll see how how you know whatever it whenever his he's schedule, available right? right um so we i don't know when exactly that show is going to be scheduled like i'm starting to um i'm starting to get so, like so many people interested in being on the show and reaching out to people about being on the show that yeah. we i actually have to start keeping a calendar mm -hmm. <laughs> you know it, it's funny we see now a lot more than we used to lego designers as personalities there's brickmasters amy and jamie right you know we're, we're talking with wes you mm -hmm. know we we got to meet Ilya, but it's so funny you know thinking of them as personalities because most of the time they spend putting together bricks or designing right. digitally or just assembling and they're, they're at their workstations and all that. And I think the contrast between just working diligently on building new exciting adventures and all that and what it must be like to be personalities is very different. Oh, absolutely. And what I gotta, I gotta tell you what I love um, up to lately is that they, you can tell that the, the they have such a sense of humor and they um, like if you look to the if you look in the um, the instruction book for the uh, blacksmith shop, you can see like Wes is like in full like medieval blacksmith guy, like artisan outfit. And it's pretty awesome. great. And the other guy's like wearing armor. I like, went to really, the really fair. I had a turkey leg, <laughs> <laughs> which is anachronistic. There were no turkey legs in medieval England. Yeah, I know, but brontosaurus legs are so hard to come by. <laughs> I also don't think that they, like, sold pretzels off of a giant stick thing. I, I like the idea that there were dinosaurs in medieval Europe. That kind of... Well, there were dragons, right? Dragons. But, um, so what I'm really hoping is as we move forward with season two of the Tricky Bricks Build and Chat, or I really should say year two, yeah. um, is starting to, uh... Uh, be able to put out ahead of time what we're going to be doing um, for different shows. So hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, if you go to up our website at trickybricks.com, you can, uh, there's a calendar up there that we 
try to keep up to date, uh, but I'm going to be trying to keep up more uh, more up to date as time goes by. But yeah, so keep a lookout for when we announce that show with Wes, because I think that's going to be um, a really, really good. One. Yeah. And that's one for, you know, an, a number of the feature ones. And I'm biased because we make the show. But if you miss that one, it would be worthwhile going back and checking it out. And you know what else you should go back and check out is Wednesday's show with Ben Alder, the fan designer of Winnie the, the Winnie the Pooh set. I think with a capital N-I-C-E, that was one of the <laughs> nicest shows we've had. Like, what a sweet guy and all the stories he told about building and designing that set with his family were amazing. It was it was delightful. He is such a kind person, and he was so thrilled to come on and talk to everybody, and really he was, like, feeling the Tricky Bricks love, you know, feeling the Tricky yep. Lug love and uh, the Tricky Love, if you will. Oh, my goodness. And he was... <laughs> And I spoke with him afterwards, and he was really... That should um, not become t-shirts. It won't. Um, <laughs> he was really excited uh, to be here. And wow, what a great conversation we had with him. And just to hear how much... Um, just to hear how much love um, and, and his family that went into that set was really... It was just heartwarming to hear. Well, I mean, one of the things he talked about that I just love, and actually, I think Moto talked about this as well, is... Doing some design and then giving the design to his kids Wayne, to play with like and sister. seeing what breaks as a way of knowing what needs to be reinforced. Right. It's like beta, <laughs> beta testing. I know Blair mentioned that as well. Oh, it was like Blair. Thing. Blair. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yes, Wayne, Lego Masters fam. Woohoo. <clears throat> Thanks, everybody, for dropping by. Um, so yeah, that is um, that is Ben, and uh, you should definitely check that out. That was on Wednesday's show. So yeah, I've never um, you know you hear a lot of stories about like I loved uh, Justin Ramsden's stories about making the different sets and you know the thought and the design and just hearing how um, how much uh, Ben had uh, was able to add to it and that the that the designers were so interested in talking to him about about what he had done and and what he what he wanted to see in the set well it I sounds like great. it was just a love fest the whole time like how it exciting was. it um, was i have to step away just for a second and i will be right back right now super fast because it's th it's that time of the day everyone I'll, I'll be right there and then i'm gonna let our little friend in okay hang on we got the yep the the crypt that's right it's time for the pause that refreshes everyone it is That's right, everybody. It's the star of the show, the real star of the show. It's Logan. Hi, Logan. Say hi to everybody. We heard leaping in the background. <laughs> I know. <laughs> there was leaping followed by running. Hey, well, Patrick I love Whistler, the way, welcome. I love the way Logan looks with Naomi's background. Can I know, look, right? Say hi to everyone. He says, give me the cookie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good one you got. Okay, here. Sound of happiness. Yay. Yay, Logan, what a, what a good, good boy. boy. Oh, he's drooling. Mmm, cute. Awesome. <laughs> he helps when we build, too. Oh, so you know what? Speaking of speaking of Logan, You're a good oh, boy. first of all, let's do this. So speaking of Logan, two, so this is going to be three times Logan. You get the real Logan. Then uh, we do currently have a two week challenge going on, and that is the Logan challenge. So Logan is the theme of our next challenge. Really excited to see what you all come up with. And that'll be yep. next Thursday. Any uh, Logan your photos you want. Will be due. Any Logan you want. It's up to you. The other cool Logan thing is um, Guy Rodwell, who is the fellow that's doing my emotes for Twitch, just sent us the first sketch of the Logan hype emoji and it is the cutest thing. Okay, I gotta say, so Flynn, Flynn's on Twitch, and I don't, you know, I'm doing other things when he does his Twitch show. So, show. so I'm gonna lobby to get the Logan emote into our YouTube show as well. <laughs> All right. Oh, we have a new person today. Um, Nicoletta. N Hi, Nicoletta. Welcome. Everybody Welcome. give a big tricky lug. Welcome to Nicoletta, who's here and new in the chat and new to the show. So thank you so much for uh, for coming by and hanging out with us. Um, 
we are so yes we're really really excited about the logan emote i think it's it was so cute that i couldn't even like it's got like confetti and it's based on our logan cookie time picture of him with his like little tongue hanging out and everything like the most popular picture of logan we have stickers of that we have artwork by a friend and now an emote it's very exciting like we're, we're stage stage pet owners yeah. St stage parents <laughs> here here say hi to the camera <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I am literally on the edge of my seat about today's feature. This is gonna, it's, this is gonna be fun, and this, you know, I know this is a little bit different than uh, what we usually do here. Um, and also, I want, I forgot to say, uh, I wanted to put an invitation out to all of the Lego Masters Two cast that's out there uh, watching right now and in the chat that you are welcome onto our show any time that you would like to come on. Um, Sundays are a great day to stop by because we do a group chat. We will have, uh, you know, we have a lot of people, but we look forward to having you all on the show in the coming weeks um, and months and we look, years. We look forward to meeting you. And and gosh, I'm just, um, yeah, well, I mean, how ex how many times can I say I'm excited, but I can't wait to see what's built. I know. And and guess what? We're what? not going to have a clock hanging over our heads when we watch that. Either. I know. I know. That will be that will be the biggest relief to not sit there and wondering um uh, you know, wondering like, oh, how's it going to What's the gonna twist going to be? What, how's it going to be edited? Like what are we going to look like? Like did, was my did, you know, did I have my shirt tucked in? Was my zipper up? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> oh, I, I never tuck in my shirt. Uh, yeah, Philip says, ugh, the clock. I know, right? Like, that was the hardest part. I mean, I don't know about y'all, and this is something that we can certainly talk about when we have you on, but, like, what that experience is like, because... Um, well, it was liter it was huge, first of all. It's like 20 feet wide or something. Right. Well, and I've talked to, like, we've talked to some other um, of the LEGO Masters people from other countries, and obviously this is the first time we'll be able to talk to people from the U.S., and I'm really, really excited to talk to you all about our shared experiences. Because um, at this point, you know, we are, so there was 24 mm -hmm. of you, 20 of us, so we are the only 44 people in the U.S. who have had the experience that we've had. And, um, you know, and I'm sure that your experience was very different from ours, especially with mm -hmm. um, with COVID and all that stuff. So I can't wait to hear, uh, like, what the differences were, what the same things that we all share in common. And I know the clock is one of those things. <laughs> like, that is, that was intense. And then how about the running back and forth to the brick pit? Oh, uh, Oh. I know, and so so I'm I'm curious, and we'll talk about this as as time goes on. But wasn't it exciting when Will came over and like jumped up and down on your table? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know the Rock Thirteen, the clock. It was it was oppressive. And now, and I don't know about what it was like when you all were on, but this is what th what would kill me is that we would be on a long one and we would be down to like the last hour and you would look up and the clock was off like they were still counting the time but the numbers oh, weren't yeah. actually it, on it was running but not displayed so you're like how long is left i don't know oh is it 30 seconds man i would and it it was causing me so much anxiety because i was like no why and then the other big the other one was the um the other one was the uh um the red the siren light on the um like when they, when it would be like one minute and they're like one minute and like the sirens going on and the red light comes on and everything turns brown <laughs> like, i know it's <laughs> just like what am i even what am i, I doing like right now mo most of you on this <laughs> most of you in the chat probably won't know this but there used to be a show called alice and in the opening there was this one character who was a waitress who was opening a bag of bag of straws and they just went everywhere <laughs> well that's what i felt like when that red light went off you're like <laughs> almost done putting on the last little mini thing and sirens well and you know the hard. thing is like you get you get so so focused on what you're doing that you you know and and the clock's not showing the time or whatever and you really do like time becomes elastic right you're just like oh it's like we have so much time oh now we don't have any time oh but do we have time because there's yeah. no numbers on the clock 
<laughs> well, I'll stop. I, I'm obviously I'm so excited about this, but I'll stop after saying I would go over to the mini. In one case, I went over to the minifig pit to to put together some minifigs for our piece, and I thought it was like ten minutes. And Flynn was like, "Why were you just gone for eight hours?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord! Shall All I? Right. Not that we need more energy, but shall I refill our coffee? Yeah, let's and then... let's refill our coffee before we get to the um, yeah. Uh, over under with how many times your brains flipped out during each challenge? I'm going with at least five, right? <laughs> oh yes, I. There's a bunch of season two people in the chat right now, which is very very exciting. Um. Thank you so much, Shane, for putting up the, the, the Tricky Lug Discord uh, link. Appreciate that. If uh, um, anybody is, uh, if anybody can uh, put up the, um, uh, our Linktree link, that would be super awesome. And if you could go, if you're not already doing it, following us on Instagram so we can hit that 10K would be so cool. I have, uh, um... It's been a slow goal of mine for a long time to get us there, so really exciting. Um, all right, Nicoletta, we'll see you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Okay, one more second, and I'll be right back. Okay, all right. So, we are... Um, ooh, there we go. Oh, yeah, rewatch the half-and-half half challenge. It was it was intense. That was, a, that was an intense one. Um, and I actually just had a wonderful exchange with Brickmaster Amy about that episode, which just aired in the UK. And um, I was telling her, um, she was saying that she loved the build. I posted a picture of our clock man, and she said that she loved the build. And uh, my response was, and I remember this vividly, and I don't know those of you in season two, um, the feeling that you get, like, and maybe they are better about their game face, but I just remember seeing Brickmaster Amy's face light up when she saw our Clockman piece for the first time completed. And it was just the, it was just like, it made my heart, my heart grew three sizes that day. <laughs> like, it was awesome. Well, I felt the same way. And, and my experience of it was that she saw it, she smiled, and then she saw us see her smile, and she was like... Oh, and then she had to put her judge not, face not, on. Not like mean <laughs> face, but just like, okay, don't, don't give anything away. <laughs> so, all right, there you go. So, anywho, I'm going to... All of that, wow. Oh, Yes. Is it hot? Um, no, it's not hot. It's just, it's very um, um, not sugary. Oh, really? Here, well, let, <laughs> let me add a little bit more here. Thank you. Maybe you can just stir it. All right, this is how, we, how, this is how it works, people. Coffee, sugar, um, all that good stuff. All right, so we have had a wide-ranging talk so far. It's, we've, we're an hour in, and we haven't even gotten to the, like, what was on the, the little... Our little thumbnail about what today's show was about um but th that was fun um uh oh thank you shane that's very sweet i appreciate that um so we have um we have a new feature that we're doing today we are going to be uh you know the, every other week we do a build challenge and i do want to warn everyone I'm giving you this warning now. Now a warning? Uh, now a warning? I want to give you this warning now. We, um, just for the next challenge, is only going to be, a, we're going back to a, to a week. Going forward, it'll still be two weeks, but for, for reasons, I'm just going to say there are reasons. For reasons, the next challenge is going to be a week. But if you want a jump start on the new challenge... Please join our Discord oh. server or show up at the Tricky Lug meeting. Uh, did you put sugar in the wrong way? I, I know why your coffee wasn't sugary. There you go. <laughs> um, so anyway, if you want to uh, find out more and get kind of a jump start on that week one, come on into the Discord or to the meeting tomorrow because uh, because our Discord is an 18 plus Discord. I mean, not that there's any shenanigans going on there, but, you know, we just like to um, it is an AFOL space. Uh, and then um, we'll also talk about it at the Tricky Lug meeting tomorrow. So, which is all ages, which is all ages. Um, so, th and it's just for that one. It's just for that one between so, the seventh so and the fourteenth. Just so we get to do a nifty thing. Yes, and it's going to be. I'm promise. I promise y'all, it's going to be really, really fun, and you're going to love it. And it's actually not 
terribly difficult. So having the week, if that's all you have, shouldn't be shouldn't be too difficult. Right. All right. Well, let's just dive right in. Okay. yes, we're finally going to get to the thing. So one of the new one of these new features that we wanted to do was um, we wanted to to provide feedback on some work in progress that people were doing. So some people very kindly uh, turned in uh, some things for us to look at and kind of talk a little bit about um, Mm -hmm. looking for friendly critique, looking for constructive criticism uh, about their pieces. And uh, people responded very positively to our, you know, to our wanting to do this. Um, So when we got uh, now, I'm going to try we're going to try and get through it. We can we have to end at 1130 today. We're not going to be able to get through everybody who sent uh, stuff in today, but we're going to we're going to try. We have six entries right now. It's a new feature and we're growing it and we're growing it. Exactly. Um, So let's head on over to. Hi, guys. (laughs) There we go. All right. I was going to say that last mock looked really like I know it was really lifelike and well done. I think you I don't think there's anything I would change about it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so this is a work in progress from our friend Drew, Drew Derschel. Now, I want to tell you, you are welcome to um, to give um, things in this, you know, to give critique in the stream and in the chat. But please be kind, and I know I don't have to tell you this because our no, group it, is a very so kind, kind and very wonderful. But you know, be kind, constructive criticism only, uh, and you know, there's, that way, I think that'd be great. Well, just like with all Bye, of si. our, we'll see you a little later. Just like with all of our Friday slideshows, right? It's a safe place to share your creations, and you know that you know it. Um, everyone's going to be supportive. Exactly. And I got to say, I may run right over to Drew's house right now and try to get him to give me that base plate because it's so cool. <laughs> with the that is cut out such a cool base plate. Well, we have the pieces that fit into it, but we don't actually have that. Thing right. Because... I haven't seen that before. Okay. So this is from Drew, and Drew is really great at making these mini fig display towers. It's like a thing. It's like a thing that he does. He has a cloud cuckoo tower that's like... He has a crowd that's at land that's incredible. So um, this is a uh, castle level of minifig display tower. I'm in the layout structure stage. Decorating and greebling will come later. So we won't address any decorating or greebling in this particular but uh, talk. I do see that he's built snot pieces in already. Yes, yes. So um, he's saying considering how to make a stream come out from the bridge and spill over the curved edge. So I would I see that the it would come out from the back where those two guys are standing right now, like from the from the sky backdrop. Right, exactly. And here I'm going to just pull this in a little bit. Okay. Well, a lot of it. (laughs) So um, you can see I got those base plates are so cool. So now my uh, my initial thought about a river coming down and spilling over the edge, because that is like that's going to be a tough like tough with that curve right so i think um i mean and fortunately because of the way that the studs are constructed around the curve i feel like you'll be you would be able to kind of like angle your bricks a little bit and i don't know how you feel about um uh i don't know how you feel about uh like i don't think you want to tumble because i know this is going to be in it. But when I did the uh, our Ikea piece that we did, mm-hmm. I had stuff that was like spilling out over the edge. And I will admit it wasn't all connected. Well, you but... used that one of the big things you used was that either four or six wide curve. Right. You know, that's very, very thin. It's about this tall. I don't think I could lay my hands on it right now. Right. But it, it gave that that thin sheet of water. Hey, Greg, how's it going? Good to see you. I have an idea, but I don't know if it's an appropriate idea because I'm I'm not always like, well, you should build it more like I would build it. Well, I mean, what what occurs to me is if you want to have the water come out and tumble, then you need a little bit of height. 
right? And you want it to go through a landscape rather than making it feel like it's painted on a sidewalk. Right. So what I would consider is, what if you take your tower structures, the architecture you've already used, and raise it up a couple of bricks so you have like a channel, a stream bed yeah. for this water to be in. And then when we get to the edge of the curved base plate, which I think is such an amazing feature of this piece, you could tumble over that with a little bit of height rather than just one brick high. Right, and then by using, like what, what I like to do is using the, the curves, either the, the two or three curves, um, like two or three long curves to kind of put over that edge and then hang over. And then you've got a free um, place where you can attach a stud on the bottom of it. So you could actually get, you know, have that curve go down. Well, that's a question I would have too, is what happens to the water after it? Are we seeing two waterfalls? There's like a tumble or I rapids? I think it's supposed to just be coming from underneath the bridge. So it comes under the bridge and it tumbles over the edge of this curve, right? And then does it disappear at that point? Like, does it stop right at the curve? No, I think it's supposed to tumble over the curve. Bye, Miss Loberta. We'll see you later. So then I wonder, like, then you're on tabletop. I wonder, um, will the shape of this base plate is so cool. I wonder, is there something that's going to join the back wall, psych, that sort of blue wall with the green base plate? Well, and you know what also could be interesting, too, a way to get it to spill out over the edge would be mm -hmm. sideways building um, using hinges. Tell me okay. more what you mean. So, like, if you okay, like, so if you have a bunch of the the eater eater hinges, oh, okay, you, can you mean build the, it sideways and kind of have a little curve. So, I think what you mean by the eater eater hinge is um, a hinge made up of two one by two plates that are hinged right, together. Exactly. It's just a plate thick, right? Exactly. Because it goes eater eater. <laughs> Well, so we, always we did call those them. on sideways. So Upstate Dad is here. He says, I've been trying to plan my Winter Village mock. I have every Winter Village set since 2015, and wow. I'd like to use them in my build instead of taking them apart and building them again every winter. Yes. Now, in that case, Upstate Dad, what I would suggest would be building a, like, building your area that you want it to be in, and then building modular spots that those buildings can fit in that can be removed so that way um instead of taking it apart you can just wrap the building up in a box yeah. when you're not using it and then it can just be placed right back like into it and you can do idea. that that trick with the um e either making sort of a slot in the landscape for it to sit in or you can use that low um clutch trick they use on on um Modular buildings, right? Where right. you use plates with only a few studs so you can pull them off easy. And Debo Bricks brings up a good point. Clip and bar would help spill over the edge too. That I could, love you, clip and bar. Especially that one. It's a one by it's like a one by one with a bar on the end of it and it's round on one end. We use it a lot for uh for um it didn't hit oh here's clip and bars. Whoa. Here we go. Oh that's right, I have to do this. Here's mm -hmm. Um, okay, so this is, um, let's move on to the next part here. Okay, I was going to try and show this um, one clip and bar you were talking about, but are you talking about like this but shorter? Yes, and round on the end. Okay, so um, this is, he's saying from, um, he, from left to right, here, let's, let's go back a second. So, oh gosh, I have to do this. Um, yeah, so from left to right, wolf pack keep, placeholder for forest folk tree house, um, uh, Knight's Garrison and Wizard Tower. So he's also considering how to rework the Wolfpack entrance. Detail gets lost in the black. Well, it, I think maybe because it's a face in there and it's such a big face, that is one of the most engaging parts of the model to me. Like the overall silhouette, you know, the the or footprint is very cool. But this arch with seeing that piece through it, I think is so cool. Oh, Wilfred, that's a brilliant idea. Um, Wilfred suggests, sorry, we're going back to the spillover, mm -hmm. but the, the, the net with the oh, tiles on it yeah. is a really fantastic idea. What a great um what a great idea, Wilfred. Isn't that a plan where you um where you sandwich the net between bricks so that you have a kind of like wiggly surface. That's correct. Now as far as the Wolfpack entrance, I would suggest maybe trying to find a, some printed pieces like if you really want to use the black, some printed pieces that might have some interesting things on them or Stickers. I know lots of people don't like stickers, but I think stickers yeah. could be really cool. How's it going, Greg? You can also um, 
Something I found if I can't make out detail in something, either picking a different shadow color to, to work in with it, mm -hmm. or actually giving an area, like if you've got a compound curve in black and you can't see it, put a drop shadow of like dark blue or another color that goes with your color palette behind it. You know, if you put a lighter background behind it, then you really see those outlines a lot more. Cool. I think. And lighting it is always good, too. Well, and I just got that really cool piece. Now, let me see. I'm going to run over here and see if I can mm -hmm. put my hands on it. I'll be right back. I love the, the hinged um, drawbridge for the castle as well. And almost that makes me think there's like a play function. In so this. check this out. I just picked this up. A really cool black piece with printing on it. Um, and... If you need it, Drew, I'm happy to donate to the cause <laughs> if that would help out at all. But um, I don't know that that necessarily goes with your wolf pack, but something like this yeah. could, could be really interesting and helpful. Well, I love that um, there's so much contrast in the face of the wolf head. I think it's really engaging and draws me into the model and makes me want to look more closely. Uh, and then uh, we get uh, considering how to replace the wolf pack side burp with a smaller pivot to the side hinge uh, hidden door that won't preclude making a campsite under the rope bridge. Oh, my goodness. Well, I hmm, that's a that's a tough one. That's one where I kind of mm. have to see it uh, like I'd have to look at it in person. Yeah, I don't think I can make out the burp as well. Oh, I see. Is that a burp on the side to the left of the two red minifigured knights? Oh, there it is right there. There's the burp. Right. So and so if you don't want to uh, if you want to be able to include that. Oh, what about something that lifts up that hinges up or down? I mean, you know what could be fun, and this is, you know, not necessarily what you want to do, but if there was a the, way that you could hinge it down and have the campfire already built on the other side of that wall. so that Play function. Play function. So that when you fold it down, it comes out, or you fold it down, and there is a, a little pull-out function where you, like, mm -hmm. you can pull the fire out. Just some ideas. Another thing, you didn't uh, particularly ask about this, but seeing this bridge in front of the wolf pack section with that arch makes me think that the water that spills over might travel under there as well. So you could get more like linear, you know, more flow in the piece by watching how the water curves around and what happens to the landscape. Uh, so he says, considering reworking the back end of the garrison into a miniature guarded in facade. Well, I love that. I think that sounds really fun. And I love this tower, the wizard the tower wizard that you going yeah. on in the background. And then he says he was planning on a moat in front of the garrison, but can't do both moat and in. Well, I here's what I think. You've already got a body of water with your water flowing through and coming over the edge. So maybe you don't need the moat. Like, maybe that's not necessary. And I um, I say the inn sounds to me more interesting. So, mm -hmm. I mean, just of the, of the two things. It occurs to me, and, it, and again, I, I touched on this before, and maybe this is just my thing, but I think a unifying bit of landscape could really help tie these pieces together because you can decorate with, with rocks or plants or, you know, part of the body of water. Right. Um, and it, it would just, um, because you've got the tower and the wolf pack on sort of opposite sides, I think some kind of unifying landscape would really just um, not only physically elevate the piece, um, but tie the elements more together in one piece. Absolutely. Well, I think this looks really cool, Drew, and I yeah, can't and wait. Yeah, and the older, look at this, the archer there. Sorry, I didn't mean to no, okay. step on you there, but but the vintage mini figures are really cool, too. I know. Wherever did you get some of them? <laughs> <laughs> um, I love, I know, I love, um, I love this. I think it's a great idea, and I always love your mini fig towers. We can't wait to see this finish. All right, so hopefully that gave you some um, ideas. Yeah. We um, okay. Oh, gosh, I keep forgetting that this isn't the thing. Whoa. Okay, so this is from the Griebling Wizard. Last summer, I found red arch pieces that made a mouth shape and purple pieces that made a tongue. Seeing them next to each other made me realize that they would be perfect to recreate Golb from my favorite show, Adventure Time. This is my first time creating something with human-like features and was wondering if anyone has advice on how to get better shaping on the arms and legs. Now, C can I start by saying you've done an amazing job with this um, with this 3D figure, and I find 3D figures to be hard. Well, but look at the... And look at the artwork. 
Yeah. Like that is fantastic. Like you've done such a great job of this. And you know, I was looking at this earlier and I mean, I know that you're asking for advice on how to shape the the limbs, but I think you kind of nailed it in yeah. my opinion. Like you, I mean, if you really wanted to smooth it out, like I look in particular at the um whoops, I look in particular at this part here, yeah. the top of the arm here on the shoulder. That's where my eye went. There are some inverse, smooth inverse curves that you could use to finish that curve off. Like they're, they can be a little bit hard to come by, but um, there, there's another one. Oh, sorry. No, I'm just saying like, I think, I, I think you nailed it. There's not yeah. a lot. I feel like I can, um, that I can say about the, um, I had an idea for this upper part of the arm there um, where you see the bottom of a two by two um, attachment point mm -hmm. is you could round that off by using a red bumper. Oh, you know, they're, yes. they're meant to go on the bottom side of plates. And so you would lose that kind of stud hole that way. But I think the modeling on the arms is great. I love the hair with all the cheese slopes. I feel like the proportions of it are really good. Yeah, I, I mean, it, I would. For me, I would focus on the base of the piece. Like, how does it resolve between the legs and and the base? Right, because you don't, you know, you're probably not going to have more. Maybe you are. I don't know. I'm, I apologize that I don't know enough about the character to say, like, if he's floating in the air or not. Like, this just looks like he's sitting on the ground. Yeah. Um, so I wonder, is it going to be a freestanding, complete figure all by itself or is it going to be in any kind of suggestion of environment because i feel like you've got three of the four limbs already totally nailed there mm -hmm. i just i can't see the other the other leg in the in the views that we've seen right oh and wilfred's i think it's not built yet that's why got it um and then wilfred says uh, a one by three unikitty neck inverted tile could also work there uh which is true so it's got you know it's like a little inverse oh, tile oh right so yeah. those are those are several things. Yes, delicious foods. This is from Adventure Time. All right. Yeah, and and the fact that you use these relatively larger curves Hi, gives Patty. those. I think it gives those limbs a lot more stability and ability to. Um, it seems like they're all hinged and articulated, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I I mean honestly, I think that you've done. Um, I think you've done a beautiful job here. Yeah, you're pretty far along. It seems like. Um, and I'm gonna here. I want to try. I'm gonna do a little bit of tech here for a second, folks. Okay. Give me one second. I just want to make this a little bit easier on myself. Because, golly, um, we are... I'm having trouble with the You're slides. touching a lot of buttons. I am touching a lot of buttons. Let's see if this helps. Ta-da! There we go. Let's, let's go back one last shot of this one. Yep. What, what I, th I, think, I think the claws are really good. I think just... Um, I, I'm sorry to not have more critical response, but just keep going in, yeah. the, in the way that you're going. Keep going where you're going. Hey, PW, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. All right. So this is from Monica Berry. And Monica says, this is what I have so far for my Let's Go Camping mock. This is based on my time working at a camp called East Bay near where I live. Uh, Debo helped me troubleshoot what I figured would be the most challenging aspect, the rickety bridge, which, mm -hmm. by the way, looks amazing. It does. Um, over the stream that comes off the bay. I plan to build up the stream roughly where the black and dark blue plates are now mm -hmm. and build up their landscape on either side. The light tan plate shows where the beach will be. I will probably build a shed for the canoes. Love the canoes. Mm -hmm. um, off to the right beyond the bridge will be the campfire and then maybe a cabin or two. Well, for, <clears throat> first of all, in addition to having um, a bridge that you've been able to keep really light in structure, mm -hmm. like keeping it thin and having it all hold together, I think is not easy. Yeah. But the kind of color blocking you've done on the base is exactly the way I start thinking about pieces. What are the big sections and what will be the contours of the landscape? Right. I, well, I love the and I love uh, like now seeing this from above, the, like uh, the bridge itself is not only like rickety and funny this way. Way, but also from the top it has like this crazy curve to it very very 3d and um i would think i don't know what your intent is for the river that's where the black plates are right now but you have such a lovely like french curve like this really just lovely delicate curve mm -hmm. that if you comment on that in some way in the shape and flow of the water would be great i i think um you've really established a wonderful kind of line and and if that's 
um, a feeling you want to continue with, extending it through the water and landscape would be great. Right. Well, and I think too, like much like we mentioned with with Drews, is that um, and this require and that's the funny thing about this type of mock building. It really does require some like a head thinking and mm -hmm. that is you know building up what's going to be your ground level so that your water level can like truly be below and it just yeah. adds up so, it, it adds so much uh realism even uh, even just a that. few plates sometimes like one two you know three three plates can make a huge difference in in terracing a landscape yeah i um and i don't know um uh, well and also too like if you are if you're able to raise up even just a few plates, um, it's gonna. It mm -hmm. gives you room to move, right? Another thing I wonder. I don't know if you plan on including many figures with this, but the fact that you're going to have a little um, like canoe rental place yeah. um, seems to me like there's a big opportunity for story to be built into this. And I was wondering how you intend for people to focus on the piece. Is it like a still life of a lovely landscape where you want to go? Is there action happening in it at the mm -hmm. moment we're seeing? And how will people's eyes travel through the piece? Like often I. I think of the eye traveling <clears throat> from upper left to lower right the way we read in the west right so i just wonder how you want people to engage with the piece right and i would say like you have such a great bridge let that bridge be your let that bridge be your um your your jumping off point, if you will, not to <laughs> jump off a bridge, but <laughs> nice metaphor um, there. Yeah, sorry, that didn't work so well. Anyway, um, let that be your sort of like overarching. Wow, that just keeps the do it. Keep wow, going. Terrible. Keep going. Um, wah, wah, yeah, wah. sorry, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, overarching. Um, so you can. Um, I would say uh, um, just let the bridge be your guide into how you approach the rest of the piece. Like take yeah. that same flow and feeling into the rest of the build. Um, I, this also often I have two things to think about something, but this makes me think of two things. Mm -hmm. First of all, you started with the hardest thing or what seems to me like it's going to be the hardest um, thing, which is great rather than building the rest of it and saying, oh, I can't make my bridge fit. So that's that to mm -hmm. me. See, that's exactly the kind of workflow I would do as well. And I used to take these, especially when I was living in Germany, I used to take all of these photos right of these large landscapes with um, often with a little person in it. But even if there wasn't a person and I'm not saying you need to include many fig stories here, there was always an actor was the actor, the sun making beams through the trees. And that was really the focus of the whole thing that pe keeps people engaged. Was it this bridge that you want to go on? I think a piece of landscape or architecture can be your character. Yeah, I am. Um, well, and so I know I see you were saying you were concerned about the canoes. If you're really concerned about the canoes, try and find um, another build that will enlarge them and then just have less of them. Like, I know you mm -hmm. have a lot. You have like a lot of them stacked up here and that works. But I think that you could really reduce it down to like three canoes and still get the point across. Yeah. Um, it, and that's something that we've discovered in our work is you don't have to, like if you have multiples of something, you don't have to pack a gazillion of them in unless that's what you're going for. But I mean, mm -hmm. in a case like this, I feel like you could use less canoes and still get the point across. Yeah, I think for me, I think it's a matter of what you want people to focus on. And one thing that I think is very exciting is that lime green and beautiful blue canoe color mm -hmm. will give you a really nice contrast to what you're establishing as a pretty naturalistic landscape. Whoop. There you go. Yeah. Right. Those little hits of color that are totally motivated by an object that would be in the scene in the real world. Very cool. All right. Um, let's see. There we go. All right. So this is from Rob <laughs> Ketcherside. I love this. This is delightful. Um, so this is, a, a, from what I understand, a menu holder. Um, and I think that, sorry, I'm going to have to get this up here because it, I, my whole script didn't, uh, print out the way I was hoping. So I give me a second. If here. I'm not mistaken, I'm seeing a tongue in coral, coral. with um to let you know the scale of this giant dragon here. Um those are tiny little skeletons in the corner. 
Yeah, let me get to, uh, let me see if I can get to Rob's, uh, okay. Rob Kittersight's here thing. So I'm also really intrigued by the crate on the left at the bottom. I'm wondering what's going on there. And then these tiny, tiny wings, too. I'm I'm remembering a dragon that had exceedingly small wings. Like, you would think this dragon could never fly. Oh, here it is. Um, okay, so I'm sorry, I'm just getting over here to Rob's responses here. Um, uh, let's see. Oops, nope, sorry. Here we go, gonna get over to Rob's thing here. I think the use of the quarter round tiles on the face for a really, really fine here we go. scale detail is, is I was asked, really nice. I was asked by a friend to design a menu holder for a dragon themed restaurant. This is my first take. It can hold an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper in its mouth that slides from the side when the treasure chest on the left is rotated out of the way. Vertical tension is added on the back with lift arms connected to bricks with Technic pins Yay, right on. Yay, structure. Um, how could it be cuter? What would be a surprising nice parts usage? Now, cuter, I can tell you right off the bat what would I, be really cute. I wonder cute. if your idea is the same as mine. What's your idea? See the eyes on this ox? Yep. That would go a long yep. way to cuting it up a little bit. Like those that's, eyes that's would be great. Exa we had exactly the same idea. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, not only if they were more contrasty, but maybe even a little bit bigger. Like Disney characters always have these huge engaging eyes, especially like whatever the cute character is in the story. Right. And I think if there were more contrast, like maybe some white or lime green or some kind of light color in the eyes that was contrasting, yep. it would really draw you in from far away what is this thing oh it's a menu holder and it has my menu yeah I, I would also suggest like just for fun i mean and it's not like a particularly unique parts use and I, while i love the coral tongue um the old school lego flags with the two fork you know with the fork oh, at the end of it yeah. always makes a really good dragon tongue um i don't know i um I was worried it was too it was too big. I don't think and remember like the eyes. Yeah. Whenever you see a piece of art, and the eyes are what draw people in, right? Like yeah. that is what you know. Like that's the thing that draws people into what you were looking at. Well, and you might think as well. So so this holds an eight and a half by eleven sheet. If you put that eight and a half by eleven sheet in there, what happens to your color palette? Does all the red of the inside of the mouth disappear? So yeah. you might want to consider a little bit more color um, that won't be covered up by the by the menu. I, I love how fanciful it is, mm -hmm. um, and the the tiny little wings, and it has one of my favorite things about successful Lego mocks: humor. I right. think that humor is built into Lego. Sorry, I think so. Minifig Chick had a good idea, and mm -hmm. also Brickanista. So Minifig Chick says maybe a pair of larger fangs somewhere, like on the edges on the outside, so that there's some yeah. variation in the teeth. Um, um, some lime green, as you mentioned, in just to kind of break up the solid green a little bit. The bigger eyes, um, and you know, Brickanista was saying looking to the side or cross side, but also I think what might yeah. work is the eyes looking down, so that they're directing the viewer down to the menu, like it's looking this at the is menu what and it's now. Yeah. Um, I might also suggest, like, just for fun, as a way to keep the paper, like, you may find, depending if the paper's not laminated, it may want to, like, schlumpf down, you know? You may consider, for fun, some little claws that clip onto the side. Oh, that, like, like he's hold, got yeah, these like, tiny I'm little... Yeah, like, I'm holding my little claws on the tiny side. Tiny dragon hands. Yeah. So there you go. That's my, those are my, those are my thoughts. I think it's so fun. It is really fun. Um, oh, and I love that back idea. That's how we do, yes. that's how we do our stuff. Yeah. Yep, and it's hard, isn't it? Always building that in, like counting every five holes so that it is all in system. And you know what? Minifig Chick says, um, add another pair of wings. I would say you could go bigger with the wings and maybe use some of the elves' dragon wings, which have some beautiful, colorful wings um, yep. that you could come up with a nut, with a, with a contrasting... Uh, a contrasting thing there. Yeah, and if you want to still use the black, you can have, again, that idea of a wing in the foreground with a slightly larger, colorful drop shadow. All right, so we're going to look and, at one more before, we get, before we're before done. Yes? And the last thing I would say about that is don't be afraid to glue it. Y well, yes, for because it's for... Yeah, that's in, because... In the, final, in the final piece, when you hand it over to the restaurant, no one's going to judge you if you glue it and make sure it always stays together. Yeah, and I can recommend some glue if you need to do that. Um, okay. 
So this is from Rob Zaccardi, and he was actually the first person to turn this in via email. Okay. And I apologize. I'm apologizing in advance. If we did not get to yours today, we will um, we will get to them on uh, um, other on other shows. But this one, this is what we're doing today. So. <coughs> So this We've is got Rob's this great curve again, right? Yeah, this is a uh, partial. F uh, this is partially for his um, the uh, the camp the let's go camping build that we're doing for Bricks by the Bay. Mm -hmm. um, Whoa, I'm seeing an, I'm seeing a build technique I love, which is here. what the banisters, the handrails on the sides of the steps, done with that great little clip that accepts a bar, yep. so that you've got that really nice angled handrail. Well, see, and like this is another case where like I'm looking at the oops, I'm, this is another case where I'm like looking at this and going, I don't see necessarily anything I would change um, no. because it's all it's all pretty good. The, if I had one critique i would say that you could go more on greebling your um on texture greebling your ground like i think you've got great you've got great color greebling in the ground mm -hmm. but i think it could have some more flow to it whether that's like making uh i don't know making raised areas where the where the truck drove in and it like pushed yep. the dirt up on the side of the um on the side of the tires you know it, it takes a little time um to do but i've seen a really nice texture i've seen this in some lego models and also some mocks where on that ground that's underneath the car you can either like add a plate here and there to to have some some height texture like you're talking about or you can paint with studs you can have part of it be tiles where like the ground is pressed flat by the wheels right. and then include some plates with the tiles so you paint your texture in with studs just where you want it. Yeah. The other thing I notice is um, I wonder if maybe the too many figures on the, on the truck, if their story business could be a little clearer. I see they're walking towards one another, but I want to know what's going on here. I mean, it looks like I think this guy's taking a picture, um, the one that's on the end. And by the way, love the use of the old road base plate. Really, oh, really I cool. see. I see. He's he's <clears throat> facing this way, taking a picture of mm -hmm. like the landscape. And Albert Lee and hey, hey Alexander 23, <laughs> how's it going? Uh, and Albert Lee had a good idea. He said maybe a larger canopy for the tree. I, could I, I was just headed there as well. Yeah, because, Great idea. you know, right now your your building is a lot bigger than your tree. And we're and if you want to give a, a feeling of like forest and camping, maybe a slightly bigger canopy that even kind of like reaches over the roof of the building a little bit. Like, yeah, so that the so that the tree is kind of like bigger on one side than it is on the other side, just to make it a little bit different. <laughs> There's also there's multiple ways to do this, but something I've observed in our trees that mm -hmm. we started trying to um, to add to is if you get your head down to the level where you're looking at the story at mini fig height and you're like, you see the door, you see all the action that's going on, then these tree branches, which are all horizontal, tend Oops. to turn into thin lines. Yeah. So if you could have any sort of either tilted or forward facing leaf structure, it would make a, uh, a, a, a more 3D tree. Oh, oh, yes, a rounder tree. And, and look, at, like if you look at, um, like on Wednesday's show when Ben showed his original tree as compared to the yeah. one that the, that the Lego designers did, there is that, like his had that same kind of flat, um, which is like traditional Lego tree style where the designers okay. use and I'll tell you clip and bar is what will will do that for you every time I've shaped a whole ball shaped tree yeah. with clip and bars and once again it's that same piece that one by one with a bar on it that has a rounded end it's yep. not flat on one and it's rounded so you can kind of and so it gives you lots of not only can you tilt your branches up and down this way you can also turn yeah. them side to side using yeah. that and i yeah i love the swing alex You're yeah right. i love the the asymmetrical shape of the tree and what i would do if it was me i would step back and look at the overall thing and see how the tree works in with the overall silhouette of the yes. top of the house and the ground and see if you can't just go a little further i love what you've done and i think it's a really exciting piece the contrasting store sign is really great mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i don't know it feels like you're uh, you know 
<laughs> far, like, far along. I was going right? to say, you're like 95% of the way there. Like, there's only, there's very little that I would, again, change. I just think some additions and some zhuzhing, if you will, <laughs> would, yeah. um, could give some more character and, and life into your landscape. And I really, really admire your use of that tree plate, too. I ha Or not the tree, the, 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 road, uh, plate. the road plate. Yeah, I haven't really used great. those at all. And I think the overall curving shape of this is really fun. Yeah. I mean, excellent, excellent work, Rob. And yeah. those, are, those are the, like, I mean, there's very little. Um, <clears throat> again, I, I would change. You know, it might also be, and let me see. Uh, and I know, you know, that Lana and Vanessa are there, so you have access to them. Some, I know, I see you have a dog, but some other wildlife might be fun too, like a like bird, a bird or, yeah, bird is what I think of in particular, yeah. is like a little bird. And is there a little teensy mini story that could happen around the, um, around the island with the, um, with the tree? Is there a ladybug there? Is there a flower? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Excellent, Rob. Great thank work. Thank you and so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for putting your work out there too. That's really, um, it's cool. It shows a lot of trust. And I'm just excited to see what people are working on. Yeah, the process I, matters a lot to me. Well, so I yeah, process matters to, to us a lot with building. So I hope that yeah. was helpful. And I hope, um, you know, please let us know. Is this something that you'd like to see more of in the future? Were we too mean? I know. Were we, were we horrible and said mean things about your work? I hope not. We tried not to. Um, hopefully, um, not only did the builders get some new ideas, but hopefully you uh, watching were able to take some of those ideas that you can bring over to your mocks as well. Yep. And, and um, Naomi, I think your suggestions um, were great. <laughs> Everyone's suggestions in the chat is so helpful. And just this notion, like we're all in this, you know, um, we're all in this crafts class and this art class together. Support, That's right. Supporting each other. And I just want to give everybody who turned their work in today a big applause. Thank you so much for turning in your work today. It's brave and it takes, a, you know, it's a, it takes a lot to go put up a work in progress shot up. I'm, that's not usually something uh, that I would do, but um, I hope, and so I hopefully uh, um, this will encourage more people to turn in. I know we had a couple more entries that we weren't be able mm -hmm. to, uh, to, we weren't able to get to. We'll get to them next time. Um, and, you know, yeah. um, so I'm just going to put this out there. Flynn and I haven't talked about this, but as, um, as a, Thank you also, and just measure of this mutual trust um, for you all putting your stuff out there for um, us to comment on a work in progress is, um, I don't know when, because, you know, we're building, building and, and stuff like that. I don't know when, but we'll put out a work in progress, um, maybe on one of our challenges for you to comment on as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, we would love I it. I want to see mean, what you think. We, we build all by ourselves. And we do. Well, the two of us. Well, I think, too, when you build a lot, you tend to kind of... And this is the same thing with acting. When you, when you do a lot of acting, you, you tend to kind of like lean into your bag of tricks. Like you have like the, like the five or 10 things that you do really well and you tend to like lean into those things over and over again. So it's, yeah. sometimes it's good to be like, you know, this is great, but we've seen this before and maybe trying to put, um, you know, maybe trying yeah. to put a spin on it would be better. I think about it with, um, with our stuff, with my stuff, I, I think about this self-censoring that goes on. Like, you come up with an idea like, what if we use this? No, that's too crazy, and you put it away. And sometimes if you bounce it off someone else, they say, no, that's not too crazy. Go further Right. with that. Go further. That would be that would always be my advice. Go further. Um, but again, Coco Chanel it. Put all the stuff on it, look at it, and take one thing off. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I took off anyway. a one by one plate. There you go. Hey, that's something, <laughs> right? Um, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been absolutely delightful, as always. And I just wanted to remind you the ways that you can find us. Um, you can find us on Instagram at Tricky Bricks, trying to hit that 10K, everybody. So give us a follow there if you can. You can email me, Flynn at TrickyBricks.com. If you want to send in your work in progress stuff, you can do that um, through the web form. If you want to send us something to the snail mail, which we have to go to the post office, oh, Flynn yeah. and Richard, P.O. Box 11517, Oakland, Oakland California, 94611. And Cowboy Cornado is here. Hello. Um, so really looking forward, everybody, to your uh, your Logan challenge builds. Don't forget to tune into the Discord or to the Tricky Lug meeting tomorrow to find out more about this one week challenge kind of that we're sneaking in on you a little bit if you want to get a head start on that. 
Um, and then Sunday, please join us with our guests, Jake Studs and Yano River Blue and our regulars, Moto, Holly, Kara and Blair, as we do a deep dive into Lego video and all of the new sets uh, that are going to be coming out soon. And, and hey, Dan, sure. how's it going? Between the Bricks, Dan is here. By the way, if you don't know Dan, check him out on Twitch. Between the Bricks, he is also recognized Lego fan media. He is also on the, the Tuesday Twitch raid train. Um, and and uh, a lovely person. So definitely go and uh, check out his streams as well. And I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure, but we might have more to say about Lego Master Season 2. We might. We oh, might. Yes. Well, when just just so you know, coming up, when we you know, like once the show actually starts airing, we are going to be doing Sunday. Um, uh, we are going to be doing Sunday breakdowns of the episode of from that week and talking a, yep. a bit about it. So, just so beware, sure. there might be spoilers. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, thank you, Lauren, and thank you to everybody from season two who came and hung out with us today. We super appreciate it. We can't wait to have you on the show and wait to talk to you. And personally, for me, I can't wait to meet you in person so I can give you a big giant hug if you're into that, if that's okay. Yeah, congratulations um, on on being cast and good luck i can't wait to see what happens all right thanks everybody so much for joining us and until we see you on sunday mm -hmm. uh no joel we changed it because we didn't want to give we didn't want to do the next day we're moving into sundays anyway because yeah, we want to do spoilers so we want to give people a few days um so yes yeah, sorry anyway uh until we see you next time which is sunday at 10 a.m uh, or actually, you can see me in just a couple minutes over on London Bridge Bricks stream. So everybody, if you're leaving here and you don't have anything to do, head on over to London Bridge Bricks and check it out. Boone and I will be there talking. And until next time, don't forget to stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, wear your mask, get that vaccine as soon as you can. You get to do lots of fun stuff. And hugs. And we'll see you next time. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Happy building. Thank you.